again, with the with that, again, uh, I apologize for the delay, but uh, with the further ado, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started. A little bit about my background before I get started, uh, that um, I do work for an iSCSI company, uh, Stonefly, but I have been in, uh, in front of uh, several different technologies. I've been in NCR in front of Fiber Channel, I've been in front of Infiniband in day and I, which have actually happened to be uh, a fiber channel company. So I personally do not have any uh, particular bias on uh, any particular interface. But uh, uh, so the purpose of this webinar is to look at as, uh, the comparison between FCOE and iSCSI as a, a customer's point of view. Uh, I do not want to promote uh, our products. It's just basically a customer point of view of uh, differences between FCOE and uh, iCOSI. I'll start with the standard uh, where we started. A uh, long time ago, we basically the a server connected with a network. Uh, which uh, if you look at the top side, we have a physical connection between the, the servers. And there is also a protocol that the uh, networking uh, communicates with, which used to be TCP IP and still is. So the networking was uh, there, and that's still there with uh, using Ethernet as a physical interface and TCP IP at, it, at its uh, protocol level. And people used to use direct hatch storage, uh, DAS. So and uh, we see, again, that that uh, physical interface to storage was SCSI, the physical cables, and the protocol was SCSI also. So the direct hatch storage was connected to the servers directly, and then the server had its own storage. The flaw with the direct attached storage or the problem was that the free storage, that for example, on one of these, uh, if you look at on the right hand side, if I had some free storage, I could not share it with the other uh, servers. So uh, what we did is, or what industry did, uh, introduce has network attached storage, which was basically a shareable storage it was centralized and it used also the network physical, which is uh, Ethernet, to connect to the NAS and uh, able to have a centralized storage and uh, use it. Uh, the, one of the good things about NAS was also shareable, like all three servers could access the same part of the volume. The issue with NAS was that the protocol or the transfer is was at file level transfer. And the file level transfer has inherent uh, uh, issue uh, which was that there is always a file system sitting on the NAS that uh, handles the NAS traffic, SIFS or uh, NFS. So uh, obviously it's going to uh, perform a little more uh, when you transferring files rather than blocks. So the performance of NAS was a little slow. And uh, at a long time ago, it did not support all the applications. Uh, I remember at some point, like for example, Microsoft Exchange could not run on NAS. Uh, a lot of those problems uh, are resolved right now. Uh, Exchange does run on NAS. Uh, so a lot of those problems are for NAS is resolved as far as the application compatibility. But still, the performance of the NAS uh, was something that the customers complained. So what was introduced was fiber channel. So if you look at the bottom side of the slide, fiber channel storage was introduced, which is basically provides centralized storage, just like NAS. But it did block level transfer. And if you look at the interface between these servers, the physical interface was fiber channel. It was proprietary cables, switches, and HBAs. If you look at the fiber channel HBAs, so you needed a fiber channel HBA, physical cable, and a fiber channel switch, and a fiber channel storage to be able to connect all your uh, servers to a centralized storage. So 
that did solve the centralized storage problem, and it also provided the block level transfer, which uh, was uh, as, as solved the performance issue. The only issue with the fiber channel, which I believe uh, was and still exists, is the high cost. It, this high cost might not be an issue for uh, some customers with a lot of money, but for some customers, the small and medium businesses, uh, this high cost was a barrier to entry. They needed a central logistics storage, but they couldn't afford all these switches and the, the expensive HVAs and uh, fiber channels. So, so they basically uh, were looking for a different solution. So uh, what happened was uh, iSCSI was introduced. Uh, so if you look at the iSCSI, uh, the idea was that we already have this network infrastructure, which is the cabling and the physical network, Ethernet. So why don't we just use Ethernet and connect to the storage? So that's where iSCSI started. And so basically, the physical interface is Ethernet, standard Ethernet, and the protocol is SCSI. So iSCSI is basically SCSI over Ethernet. Uh, 